Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. This is part 2 of the inventory tutorial and today we're gonna work on the UMG part. So let's start. Open your project and once it's finished create a new folder called UMG. Inside here we want to have some user interfaces. So create some widget blueprints. This one will be the inventory main. Then we need also an inventory box which actually uh, holds our inventory. and the representation of our items, which will be inventory grid slot and inventory panel slot. Before we start working on these widgets, we want our character to have a key press event where we can actually see our inventory. So go ahead and open your third person character. And inside the event graph, delete the old content from the I key press and pull up a create widget from the eye. Select the inventory main and create a variable from there. After you created the variable, make some space for the is valid check. So type in is valid. And here we're gonna check if our inventory main is created and if not, we create it and fill it into our variable. After that, we need the add to viewport for our inventory main. And then we want to set the input mode to um, UI and game. Make sure to add the player controller and also the widget. From the player controller, we can also get the set show mouse. So pull it up and make it true. So we want to show the mouse cursor after we yeah, also created the widget. And if our widget is valid, we want to flip-flop between collapsed and visible. So add a flip-flop. And from the A, we want to get visibility, a set visibility, sorry, and make it to collapsed. And for B, we want to have it as visible. Here you can just copy and paste it from the create widget. And for the collapsed, we need to delete the set input mode game and UI and get the game only. And don't forget the set show mouse and set it to false back. That's it for the inventory inside the third person character. Oh, here's a mistake. Oh, I forgot to connect those, compile and save, and it should work. Let's test it. If you press I, the mouse should appear, and if you press I again, it should disappear. And it works. Let's start with the inventories. So go first inside the inventory main. Uh, oh no, uh, the inventory box, sorry, my mistake. Inside the inventory box, we want to set to custom and we want to set the width to 600 and the eight to 800. Uh, you need to put in a size box so that we, when we pull it inside an inventory main, it will have the um, size of the user created widget. So when you pull it in without the size box uh, overrided, then it will not work. So here we put it to 600 and 800 and then when we compile, save, and we want to put it again in here, it will have the correct size. Next up, let's work on our inventory box. So here, search for a scroll box and put it in. Inside the scroll box, we need a wrap box. This will contain our items. After this, let's work on the a logic inside our inventory box so we can actually see our inventory items. So make here an event construct and pull in the inventory box. Oh, and I forgot to actually make a custom event here inside the box. So let's add it here. This will be our build inventory. After we created it, we can pull it now from our inventory box inside our inventory main. So we have a path through 
to the inventory box. This event will only fire on event construct, but we want to always fire it when we press I. So we need another custom event, which we can then activate from the third person character. So create here a build inventory box, and then go to the third person character. And from the inventory main ref, we're gonna pull the uh, custom event build inventory box, which goes through the main widget to the inventory box and builds our inventory. And same goes for the visible part here. Then inside our inventory box, we need a variable called inventory. So make it an item data and make it an array. Pull it in, set it here from the build inventory event. And don't forget to make it expose on spawn for the create inventory box widget and also instance editable. And inside here, you need to make it pass by reference so you don't have the node anymore. After we did this, we need to uh, get from the build inventory box our reference through the build inventory. And then inside the third person character, we also need to add the inventory to the custom event. So what we are doing here is pathing through the inventory reference from the third person character to the inventory main and then to the inventory box. And you can also delete the event construct here. We don't need it anymore. Next up, let's work on the wrap box. So click on the wrap box and make it as, as in variable. Then we can pull it in here and clear all children's. So every time we build an inventory, we want to first clear the inventory. So we don't have duplicates here. Then from the inventory, we want a for each loop. And inside the for each loop, we want to create a widget, the item widget. From the inventory um, panel slot. So there it is. And then uh, no, actually pull in the wrap box and say add child. Connect it to the chain. And then we need to add the viewport, I guess. No, no viewport. Um, yeah, let it as it is. We don't need to add it to the viewport. Compile and save. And then let's go to the inventory panel slot. Again here we need to set to custom and we want to have now the 600 width from our inventory box. And again we need to do the same with the size box so we can actually have the correct size of our box. Make sure to override everything correctly here with 100 and 600. And let's add a border here to it so we have a color representation of our items. For a testing purpose, um, press OK. Compile and save. And then go back to the inventory box here. And let's first test it. Click on play. Pick some items here up with E. And press I. And there it is. Next up, let's add some slot padding. So we have a gap between our item boxes of 5 in the Y X. Play again. Look at it with the I key. And we can now see we have four items picked up. Yeah, here uh, it, would, it had an error message here. Uh, was already added to the screen. So go to the third person character and let's look here. Delete the add to viewport and connect it back. Because we already uh, con added it to the viewport. We only need to do it once. So go back into the inventory main no, sorry, inventory panel slot. And here we want to add a text now so we can see um, what item we picked up. Uh, first, make a variable item data, which will be only item data. And compile and save, and then you can put it in after you made it instable and expose on spawn. And from there, break it and get the name. 
then we want to fill these um, item data. So here add the array element to the create inventory panel slot inside the inventory box. And then we can test. Now it should disappear with the name. Take some more and then from the apple and then it should also add some apples there. So the is stackable is working and it's not stackable also, so that's good. For the next step, we want to add a checkbox here. So wrap the scroll box with a vertical box so we can actually add here the checkbox which um, swaps between our panel and grid slot. Um, make sure to make it fill on the scroll box so the checks box is at the bottom. And then click on the unchecked state changed and from there we want to have some logic. But first rename build inventory into build inventory panel slot or slot and then we add a custom event build inventory grid. Here we can just copy and paste it from above and what we then need to do is only swap the inventory panel slot widget. Um, yeah, let's actually do it here inside this use the inventory grid slot and disconnect the item data which is at the moment not inside the grid slot. Next from the is checked we want to have a branch and we want to swap between those two inventory builds. So from the true we want to have the build inventory slot and from the other one we want to have the build inventory grid. And then just connect the inventory inside there. After this we want to have a check always when we build our inventory. So um, after we build our inventory we want to have a branch and this branch will get the checked state of our checkbox. So type in is checked and put it in there. And if uh, it's true, we actually want the inventory slot to be built. So from default, we go to the grid and from the true, we go to the build inventory slot. Make some space here and connect it. Gonna pull it up here so we have more space there at the top. And we need to do the same for the inventory slot when we build it. And yeah, just connect it like before. If it's true, we want to build this inventory slot. And if it's false, we want to build the inventory grid. And the last thing we have to do is to actually yeah, make our grid slot correct. So open it up. Again, make it on custom. This time 100 and 100. Remove the canvas and add the size box. Don't forget the override. And add also our, a border so we can actually again see that there is something. And then we can already play test it. We don't have here item data, so let's just check if um, it correctly adds the widget based on the inventory. And there it is. If you press on the checked state there, it switches between those two. Cool. For the last thing, we want to have also a inner slot padding for both grids. So we set now from the wrap box the slot is padding when we change our uh, state. So from the inventory slot we have we want to have, uh, oh my mistake, pull it up here before we clear the children. For our grid slot we want to have five on the left and right and five on top and 
So, uh, and for the inventory slot, we want to have the same, but this time not with 5.5, five, but with 0 0.5. So it switches between those two paddings here. We can test this, pick some items up, press I, and there you go. And for the last part, let's create the amount inside the text. So for this, go inside your panel slot and from the get text, drag a branch. And if the amount is greater than one, uh, sorry, two, then we want to um, set a text. For the faults, we want to copy and paste. And from the false, we take the text at all. And from the true, we want to have a pen here. So pull the two texts to the false. And to the true, we make an append here first uh, to string and then an append. So from the name, an append, and then we can convert it to a text. Add the amount, press there next, add the name, and then to the true. And that's it. We can now compile, save, and play. So pick some items up, and again, press I to see the output. And there it is, seven woods and four stones. Also for the apple, it works too. It don't add a number there, so everything works fine. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we will work on drag and drop and yeah, also how to drop the item then inside the level. See you then. Bye.